OK, so if we think back to bring kind of all these ideas together, of thinking about graphing the first and second derivatives, the gradient function of the original curve, and then the gradient function of this curve here, OK, if we just go through that process, we can identify the stationary points, OK, because that's where the gradient function will be crossing the x-axis. I'm not going to do this too accurately. OK. So that's those points there. And we can see that we're going from a positive to negative gradient. OK, so um, I don't know, something positive to negative gradient. It's going to be a maximum point uh, at, uh, there's going to be a maximum negative gradient. Then we're going back into positive gradient. We hit a maximum positive gradient. Then we're going into negative gradient. Hit a maximum negative gradient, then into positive, similar way, and then back into negative gradient, like so. Okay, so this is what that curve will look like. And in a similar fashion, we can draw the next curve looking at the stationary points of the first derivative. Okay. So what we've got, we've got negative gradient. So we're coming up from this direction. And then we're going to get uh, to, um, sorry, after that point. So we've got negative gradient. Then we're going into positive gradient. There'll be a maximum point of positive gradient. So it'll come back round. And like so. Um, sort of tracing it round. So into negative gradient. Then uh, we're into positive gradient, and then we're back into negative gradient past that point. Okay, so let's now trace in those points of inflection. So the point of inflection that I had here identified itself with being at that point there, the stationary point of f prime, and then that point there. Here's the uh, point of inflection for the original curve, and it's that point there. The point of inflection, and the point of inflection somewhere there, working its way down, okay? So, we can identify from this that we can, that we can find the points of inflection, so the points of inflection can be found uh, when the second derivative is zero. Okay. Now we know there's a little there's a caveat to that. Okay. There's a caveat to that that if um, those points that I'm finding there are actually stationary points for the original curve, then I know nothing. I need to do a little bit more investigation. But if they're not stationary points, then this holds that they are points of inflection. Okay. Now, what you'll also notice then is that when um, the second derivative is negative, okay, so we've got negative there, negative there, negative there, okay, let's see how that traces out in the original curve, right? So we've got negative um, second derivative. Okay, and that is relating to this portion of the curve. Okay, so this portion of the curve is going around in a clockwise motion. And here it is negative, and it is going around in a clockwise motion. And here it is negative, and it is going around in a clockwise motion. Okay, so when it is positive, we're going around in a anti-clockwise motion. And when it's positive, we're going around in an anti-clockwise motion. So we can use the second derivative. So when f double prime of x is negative, okay, so when it was negative, we actually have the curve being concave. Okay, 
So when the second derivative is negative, we have that portion of the curve is concave. And when f double prime of x is positive, okay, then we get the curve being convex. So what this allows us to do is to now identify the regions of the curve that are concave or convex by setting up this inequality and solving it. Okay, so that's all I would need to do. I'd need to find the second derivative. If I wanted to determine where it was concave or um, concave down, if you will, then I just put the second derivative as less than zero, solve the inequality. Okay, and that's how I can go about it. And we're going to go through some problems of this uh, in the next section.